I'm Sean from Arfield Rugby Media. This is Simeon, also known as the TikTok Soccer. Hi guys, I'm Murray, also known as Plus 4 Rugby HQ. I'm Harvey Allen, also known as Alan Harve. And welcome to Season 2 of the Rugby Connection Podcast. Hope you're ready for it. For the fans, by the fans. Hello and welcome to Episode 4, Season 2 Rugby Connection Podcast. Simeon, how are we getting on? I am absolutely grand. We had a really good level game yesterday uh, in Division 1. was probably my best game I've ref this season. Absolutely class. Got a really good report in from um, the SIU ref in it. Harriets were, both Team Silcook and Harriets were both very impressed. Um, really enjoyed it. Race some players. I, I have got a wee bit of a cold. Um, mm. It's not COVID. We have lateral flow tested. But I've kind of lost my voice. Like you guys, you boys heard it earlier. I could not talk this morning because of refing in the cold. Um, but we're all in all happy. Good win for Ulster. And um, after we talk to our other people here today, we're going to play an interesting conversation which happened involving the Ulster game in just a brief minute. But if, all in all, very good weekend. Murray, how about. Oh, ah, 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 drink of the day. Brewdog Elvis Juice. We've made it to the alcohol. We've made it to the alcohol. Okay, usually we get all the niceties out of the way and then you get your drink of the... That's well, I, cool. I'm on we'll the alcohol get... tonight. We're getting going. Right, we're Whoa. getting excited. Right. Yeah, right. I can't so... talk. I've been sat on my bed all day. Um, <laughs> so, the Murray, reason... how are you? I, I'm all right, mate. I've been... I've been on an absolute high the last 24 hours. I'll get into that when we get into the prem, but just, oh, I'm, I'm on an absolute high now. The reason Simeon said other people is Sean is not with us tonight. He is very busy. And to be different to every other podcast, we've got a replacement. Harvey, how are you going? Hello. Mate? I'm all right. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. Uh, yeah, not been too bad. Um, I trained earlier today and my shoulders kill like <laughs> hell. Um, <laughs> um, obviously, I also watched the Quinns game on Friday and I'm absolutely buzzing about that. So, uh, no bad week for rugby, if I'm brutally honest. Well, that's been quite a good week, but we'll get into that briefly, uh, shortly. And, Simon, what is the clip that you have that you want to show us before we get into We've got a little bit of a voice um, conversation. So, as anyone who knows, um, my dear girlfriend Emily does not understand rugby to save her life. Um, and I started It usually happens like that. Huh? It usually is like that. Yeah, it usually is. And I asked her some questions after the Oscar game. I said, right, Duke, who, by the way, had a fantastic game. I was like, what position is he? Um, and then I don't actually have the message of her, what she said. But what she said was, he's a scrum half, right? And I was like, right, how's this happened? And so I think... Hey. We'll get this playing. Give me a second. I, if I, um, yeah, well done. He's a scrum half. What does a scrum half do? You, you win your vodka, well done. I want to know how you found that out now, because I know... How did you find that out? I should also say the bet was if she got it right, I have to get a bottle of vodka when she's here next week, so... Fair. Right, uh, okay. but this is this okay. is the response. This is the response to um how she found it out. You don't need to know how I find it out. You just need to know you owe me a bottle of vodka. <laughs> 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 oh, and it gets it gets worse, guys. She kept going, so... All right, then. Is the scrum half a back or a forward? Back. I'm getting a bit... We've got on, on the last question. I'm getting a bit sus of how she found these questions out there. I'm, I'm getting a bit... What does a scrum half do at the scrum? And I've been... But on the last one, you were correct, so well done. The scrum half feeds the ball back. Mm. Oh, I'm getting mm. some sus from this guy. I mean, it's technically meant to be straight in the law, but I mean, we've never seen a scrum off do that in their life. So, I mean, does she deserve a bottle of vodka? I don't know. I, I think I bet it's a bet, and on face value, you're going to have to give her that bottle of vodka. She's like but... a fucking seven. She's cheating, and we don't know how she's been cheating in this. In yeah, this... but we, we can't prove it. That's the issue. So you're going I to think have to... It's like a, it's a classic seven. A classic seven. I think at the end of the day, you might be living well. She gets that bottle of vodka. <laughs> there you go. Some influence from Harvey there. Right. Great advice. Um, so... I think it, I think what the vodka's actually going to be going to is cocktails. So happy days. 
Lovely stuff. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. You'll get half of that anyway. Anyway. Exactly. Anyways, moving on from right. Northern Irish. Yes, we've got rug- a lot of rugby to talk about. Some brilliant games. We're starting off with the Premiership. I'm not on my own this week. Harv's helped me out. He's been yes. watching the Prem. And we start off with an absolute banger. Quinn's versus Bristol oh. Bears. A repeat of the semi-final last year. We all know how that went. Sold out, stoop, Friday night lights. I'm just, I'm selling it myself. It's amazing. Before Harv gets into it, because he's a big Quinns fan here, keep it short. Bristol Bears, history repeats itself. Thunder strike, uh, lightning strikes twice. They bottled it. 21 now up at some point in the game. 24 7 at halftime to the Bears. Bear in mind, full time, 52 24 to the Quinns. 45. I will repeat that. 45 unanswered points scored by the champions. <laughs> Marcus Smith came off the bench. Absolute filth that he presumed. Prop, Will Collier, unreal. Wow. Don Brandt, <laughs> just amazing number eight. And Tyrone Green as well. Just They're the ones that stood out to me. But we'll get it from the man himself. Harvey, what were your thoughts of the game? Oh, I think my first thing is I... I really wanted tickets to it, but I didn't get it because it was all just sold out. Well, I thought that was amazing, sort of, you know, it's the first game, you know, the first sellout game since COVID and it just shows that the fans are back and, you know, we want to be passionate. Um, it was an amazing game and I can remember, I um, I sat down with my parents and bless them, my, my parents don't know much about rugby, um, but, you know, they agreed to sit down with me and watch the game, you know, fair dues to them, uh, thanks my parents. And, um, we sat down, watched the first half an hour. I wanted to turn it off. If I'm brutally honest, you know. The messages the... I was getting from you at the time was so <laughs> funny. Because I was sending them that's in the Ulster game. And then I was having Harvey's face just like, he looked like just a sad dog. It looked like, it looked like someone offered a dog a treat and then took it away from his face. <laughs> That's because we 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 played so well. We played so well in the first ten minutes. And we deserved the score. We deserved the score. And then they went off and scored three converted tries. And I was just like, "Well, this is completely against the run of play." So those first, those first like part that first half an hour, I genuinely just wanted to turn it off, forget about it. You know, first loss of the season. And I was ready to accept that. We scored the try just before half time. And I think that's when sort of the momentum started to build. And I know the commentators at the time, they were saying that the momentum was starting to build. You know, we'd seen this before, um, you know, in a certain semi-final that happened a long time ago. Um, in the galaxy, how far away. <laughs> the second half came in. Wow. We, my parents, again, who haven't watched much rugby, just sat there laughing at the Bears. Just sat there. I was just laughing at how amazing we were because I can't think of a player that put in a bad performance. You know, that's, that's, Mar- so, that's very true. Marcus yeah. Smith, Marcus Smith came in, completely changed the game. I mean, you know, six conversions, one try, one stunner of a try that was. That, was um, that's, that should happen at the professional I mean, level. At the um, the sure. commentators, as soon as. Yeah. As soon as he touched it down, uh, I could just hear one of the commentators just go, oh, shut up. Just shut <laughs> up. <laughs> like, it, it, he's just had enough because he knows Marcus Smith is just that extra bit of brilliance. And if this doesn't prove that he should be in the England squad for Autumn and the Six Nations, I don't know what will. Um, yeah. Quick question. 100%. Would you get rid of Farrell? <sighs> it's a tough question. I don't know if I'd play like the 10 and 12 that he was doing with Ford. All and right. I think it'd be it'd be a shame to see Ford go, if I'm brutally honest, because I think Ford's got a lot to offer. But I don't know. Some people are a bit sceptical over where Farrell will play. I want Farrell still on the side. But I think, you know, if they can do some sort of 10 and 12 thing, that'd be quite cool. Um, but yeah, going back on to Harlequins, um, Tyrone Green was amazing. Caden Murley, who I took up my fantasy team, was amazing. It's unreal. Andre Esterhazen was amazing. Um, yep. Alex Dombrandt was my man of the match. Oof. Wow. Yeah. Cardiff so, yeah. Met Boy. Cardiff Met Boy. 
everyone was talking everyone's been talking about this sort of young eight thing everyone's just been run away with Sam Simmons I don't know why people aren't talking about Alex Dombrant more I talk about I talk about Alex Dombrant to the point I would actually move Sam to the open side yeah and, and nothing against Sam and we'll get into Sam Simmons later on but as good as number eight he is he does move a bit more like an open side mm. flank I, I agree with that He's in those wide channels. He's very, very nimble, and Alex mm. Dombrant is a big I unit. He's like, have... he's like what six four? Yeah, six, he five? is. He is a machine. Yeah. Imagine having Sam Underhill then at six, though. Uh, you know my... I'd, I have think... Tom, I'd have Tom Curry, but you know my feelings on Sam Underhill. Nothing against him. I just, I'm meh. oh, I love Sam Underhill. I feel like that's a debate I'd probably have to get back to, like in November, when yeah, the that's fine. Um, when the internationals are all back on, because I think. Um, <laughs> Sing we could do it here. Well, yeah, we, we could. could. You could get a flag background. We'll get you a different flag. Yay! England flag. You have a Scotland, Northern Ireland, or Wales. You get <laughs> um, just not the tops behind because that's my thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I need. I need something. I've got the my Greeks. Queen's flag. I've got my Queen's flag up there that I stole from um, my first game, and nice. then that's that's all I've got. Oh, club flags would work. That's different. That's new. There we go. Yeah, but I don't even really you want to. You got the shirts, you got the fleeks. And I've got, got a lot of shirts. I've got way too many shirts. That's my problem. Yeah, you both do. I'm 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 good at saving money. It's a fucking lie. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, absolute dominance from the Quins. Like, what a comeback. Like I feel that's a better comeback than I know it was more stakes in the semis, but that's yeah. I the think fact that I Northmore think... got sorry. Harvey, <laughs> the fact the that semi, Northmore yeah. got his bonus point try, and the, like you said about the commentators, they were like, "No way, it's happening again." And they're only it was only twenty six, twenty four at that point. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, I think obviously the semi finals. There's more stakes on the line, and they probably did it a bit more dramatically. Hmm. But I think this time showed pure Harlequin's ability. Yeah. I why think you're this, champions, yeah. This showed why we're champions. You know, I've I've, I've got a mate off in. Um, he plays for some Bath school affiliated thing. He, 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 you know, he can't keep on telling me that Quinns win the league was a fluke, and um, I feel like I feel like that. I sent the score to him. Basically, just said, "Shut up," because he he's been taking the piss for ages now, and I think if that doesn't show him, I don't know what will, because. We played amazingly yep. against the top, top side. Admittedly, they've been struggling, but still a top, top side. And I think if we can bring it to them, we can bring it to anyone in the league. Yeah, I mean, well said. I think the last point I kind of want to make on this game is I don't... Like, people are starting to question Pat Lamb as a coach after this. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's Pat Lamb. He, you've seen when that score started changing how pissed off he was. That... Is player mentality. These are players that will put up 20 points in 20 minutes and be like, right, cool, we've got this against any team. And then choke and struggle and Aye. don't know how to <coughs> take control again. You know, yeah, right they've, <laughs> they've um Bristol been in this situation before a couple yep. of times this season. <laughs> and obviously, um, they were sort of in this situation against Bath and they, they saw that throw, which is, I think, um, to say lucky, but they lost to Saracens. Yep. And they lost to someone else. I can't remember who it was. What? They got slapped by Wasps. wasps. That was that it. Was they the got absolutely... That's the second time Bristol's been slapped. Exactly. I don't think Pat Lamb's a bad coach at no, all. Right, no way. I respect Pat Lamb. I think he's an amazing coach. And if you're anything, mi- it's in mentality. You're missing. You're missing um, Red Raja, aren't you? You're missing. Sam. Yeah, he... I think you're missing Pietau as well. So, not yeah, Pietau was think... there. Pietau played. Oh, he was there. But you're missing. I know there's more players than that. They are missing. Yeah. I know Redrada. Is he supposed to be um, out until the new year? Isn't he? Yeah. He's, yeah. He's so it'll, he's... Be a, it'll be a big, big loss. That's the thing. But Randra wasn't the captain anyway, like Stephen Lewatua is. And hmm. they're just all shut down and oh, I don't know. Anyway, we could talk about the, <laughs> we could talk about the Bears bottle on it all day. But, but Murray, 
you have about what? a very fun time to talk about, don't you? I'll yes, get, on, I'll, moving I'll get Friday. That. I'll get into that. We're into Saturday now, but we'll go. We'll finish with the Chiefs game for the Saturday because <laughs> there's a lot to talk about in that one as well. <laughs> uh, we'll start with Saracens versus the Falcons. That was a good game. I'm not going to lie. Falcons had the lead at halftime, 17-10 over Saracens, but Saracens just showed too much class in the second half. 37-23 to Saracens. Max Mellon's done a filthy offload. I don't know if you boys have seen it. No. Do you remember no. the clip years ago, Brian O'Driscoll looking at like Johnny Six in the eyes to pass it back to him, and then it goes out the back? Like, effortlessly. Max Mellon's pulled that off. To Tim Swinson, it was absolutely filth. The best look at it because they do a lot in depth is look at the rugby trainer on TikTok. So he's he put a big video on it and it was class. It, it's mwah, it, I can't hype that up enough. It's mm. <coughs> like he looks like Owen Farrell dead in the eyes and just pops it out the back to, t- to Tim Swinson. Lovely stuff. Very. So yeah, Saracens finish off strong. I kind of feel sorry for Falcons. They were starting to starting to really build momentum after last week's big win over the Wasps. But Saracens never... just I think that must that more down to Saracens just big players, I think. I yeah. think anyone else and maybe not anyone else, but against a lot of other premiership teams, um they'd have won it, I think, still, because they put up a really good fight. Yeah, absolutely. Hundred percent agree with you. If anyone realizes why I'm being quiet tonight, it's because of his Voice. Just, I mean, I said it to you earlier. It just seems like you're going through puberty, but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we move on. Another tightly contested game. London Irish versus Leicester Tigers. 21-16 to the Tigers. And it was narrow. At 78th minute, George Ford penalty just to confirm the win. And I say it again. like London Irish know how to push a team right to the edge. And Leicester Tigers... Again, using the forwards to get the tries. Dolly and Liebenberg this week. It's, it is old school Tigers and it, it's great to see. And getting the tough wins against maybe not the more, like the bigger teams, like your London Irish and all that, that, that has championship mentality written on it. I, <laughs> I fully expect Leicester to keep going and finish top Let's four just- easily. Leicester's been class, and it is, as we've said it, and that I've been saying it since the end of last season. Leicester yeah. are back to their old ways of just fronting up and getting the wins, no matter what. If it's a scrappy little fucker of a game, they'll grab it by the neck and win. Yep, and that's exactly what they did. In that. Yeah. So this was and I think it was, um, it was a real shame just to see sort of Leicester down there in the last few years because ultimately they are a big club and arguably one of the biggest in England. You know, you never really want to see them down there. Oh, yeah. they've, they've got they've got a they've got a whole lot of history, that's the thing. And you know, they deserve to be up there just by their pure history and pure class. They deserve them more than Saris. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, there we go. It's not hard. Yeah, I'd lo- I'd love to see them get relegated again just because. It'd be funny. <laughs> At the rate we're going, it's gonna be Bristol. There's no relegation this year. There's no it's relegation fine. this year, yeah. They're oh, yeah, fine. Is, is there? They're sorted. Ealing or I'd like to see Cornish Pirates fill yeah, in. I want get, to see yeah. Pirates Cornish, up. yeah, Cornish have a good um have a good future, I reckon. They've got a new stadium coming up in Truro. Um yeah. they, they beat Ealing actually. They did beat them um last week. So I mean yeah. I am half Cornish, so I do want the Pirates again. <laughs> I mean, seeing as they beat the team that beat Saracens, maybe this is like Cornish Pirates Premiership. Hey, Cornish Pirates last year. Did they? Aye, it was the first game of the season. They beat him. I remember it well. Just imagine, just hypothetically, because we know how good like local derbies are and get the crowd fired up. X to be cool. Oh, can we? Can I go? Can Seven go? versus Cornwall. I think yes. we, have to, we have to pull a road trip for that one. We can all stay in the dance. Oh, so <laughs> perfect. He's got a farm. We'll all sleep in the shop. Perfect. Shed. We don't have to pay for our hotel. This is even better. You don't even have to better. pay for a hotel when you come to fucking Edinburgh either, mate. I you know. The best life. <laughs> perfect. Right, lads, we move on because we've got another nail biter. Higher score this time, but an absolute nail biter. Gloucester versus Sale Sharks. 33 32. Yes. Simeon said it. 
this is back, back on it. First game back, and he's on a fucking mad one. Two tries, oh, unreal. And I said it last week that how much a, a difference he made. Adam Hastings starting at ten, leave him there. He's perfect for Gloucester. It makes perfect sense. Even sort of the drop goal, just why not? And he's he is really starting to show his class. He's he is really becoming like into his own. I think when he was at when Finn left Glasgow, Adam became the starting ten at Glasgow, and he kind of played the same style. And it's like, oh, it's just to fill in for Finn. Same for Scotland. <laughs> but, but, the move to the Prem, Adam Hastings like, no, I'm my own player and he's definitely showing his class in that. He's going to push Finn to play better though. Yeah, competition always feeds better. Like, even look at Quinn's, like we talked about it a few weeks ago, Tommaso right. Allen. Yeah, I think um, Tommy, he might be out for a few weeks after the head injury, but um, hmm. if he can push Marcus to be better than he already is, I mean, think about how much of a player then he'll become. Exactly. Aye. Just com- any team, any country, competition makes a better player. Mm-hmm. We move on. Buckle up, boys, because this is a big one. <laughs> XR <laughs> Chiefs versus Worcester Warriors. Oh, just Sandy, the experience of Sandy Park was phenomenal. I'll talk about the game first and then a little bit about my experience. 42 5 to the Chiefs. They went full go at it. Simmons, I mean, I, I say things are inevitable. Death, taxes, Sam Simmons scores. He got two. One was a very Simmons try, just five metres out, pushing over the line. The second one, I don't know how he wasn't stopped. He got tackled. He shrugged the player off. He wasn't held. He kept going. He then got tap tackled. There was no one near him. Popped up to his feet and run it in. <laughs> Simple. Facundo like- could... The one week so, I put him in my fantasy team, this is like the first week I knew he was returning. I had yeah. all the faith. Just 44 unreal. points for me. That is that is beautiful. That's beautiful. Facundo Cordero, two tries for him as well. But he has magic feet. The commentator said it as well. He, he was ducking tackles. And I mean, I actually ducking them. Like some of the Worcester players were going like for his chest. He just wriggled out underneath. Just, oh, beautiful. And because he's a Cordero, and obviously Santiago used to play there, Chiefs fans absolutely love him. Johnny Hill making his 100th appearance for the Chiefs as well. There was uh, two debuts for the Worcester Warriors, Duhan van der Merva and Rory Sutherland. I thought Rory played well. It was quite a quiet game. It's kind of hard to praise props in such a high-scoring game because, yeah. but I Unless he played for Quinns. Yeah, unless you do what um, Will Collier. Oh, yeah, unless what Will Collier does. Yeah, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for my Will Collier tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> On your bum, that's the way you want it. I'll just show it happily at Gwyn's. <laughs> just <laughs> when old Will Collier. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we can sort you out in Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But yeah. Rory Sullivan, I think he had a solid game. It's just very hard to like point out like what he did fantastically. I think he just did all the basics very well. Duhan van der Merva, I mean, we all know what Duhan can do. 6'4", 105 kilos, can run 100 metres in 11 seconds. No thanks. I think, I don't know if it was a big stage and because it was a prem. Sorry, like... but I have, if I had a pound for every time Murray mention the fact of how heavy Doohan is and how fast he could run. I, I, I would pay off my student loan. There you are. I'm help I'm trying to help you, mate. <laughs> Where's the pound then? <laughs> no, Next I'm, I'm time not, I'm up I, in Cooper. I'll have a little I'll have a receipt for you. No, no, I'm not funding it. I'm just trying to help you out. <laughs> but yeah, I think I just I, I just think Doohan almost it's like he tried too much. Instead of just playing his style of rugby, which is run and hit hard he was trying to offload it didn't work for him you got a little bit of the Lions banner as well like I think Stuart Hogg absolutely leveled him and it like when the ball went away they're like way at each other and like Rory Sutherland did the same with Johnny Hill which you could just tell they're all good friends off the pitch but yeah I feel like I feel like Duhan will be one to watch going forward but I think just okay, chill out I know it's your first game but yeah, big win for the Chiefs, and I'm so glad that that was my first game. Absolutely unreal. The tomahawk chop is breathtaking. It's un- like you hear it loud on the television, but when you're there, 
like hairs on when the back of there my in neck. The thick, when you're there in the thick of it, it must be yes. something special. Yeah, special. It's, it's absolutely unreal. Like that, if you've looked at my video on TikTok of like my day at, at Sandy Park, the first tomahawk chop in that video, that was the players warming up. There was no action on there. That's how passionate those fans are. And, I mean, what's rugby without alcohol? We've got a nice little exercise. Picture there. <laughs> and a nice little cup there. We've got... And I think this is a nice touch. I'm not entirely sure if other clubs do this, but I feel like they do something similar. Like a Centurions club. Top, uh, cup, that's, I like that. I rate that. And like I said, Johnny Hill, he'll get his own Centurions Cup probably next week because that was his 100th this week. Yeah. Sam Simmons double, Cordero double, LCD doing his thing. Richard. Captain Cap- Slady. Captain Slady on real. Clean, 100% off the tee, making all the right decisions. Ah, oh, just. And thank you to everyone at Exeter just making me feel so well. I felt like second nature. Usually, when it's like my first game at a new stadium, I'm a bit, hmm, we'll see how it goes. But no, I fit right in. And we got this lovely commemorative. It is a lovely shirt, top. to be fair. I like that. It's pretty banging. Yeah, it was, it, it was, it, it was NHS, yeah, NHS top. It was NHS day yesterday. So, yeah. Chiefs brought a commemorative top for it and did the damage to Worcester in it. So there we go. We move on. Into we'll Sunday's still be game. needing the NHS, you might be able to say, because they yeah. did the damage. Oh. Hey. Uh, also, you just before... I sat in my room too much today. Yeah. <laughs> you need to go out more. No, I can't. I'm ill. <laughs> if it's not COVID, that's not an excuse. Yeah, but I'm trying to get better, aren't I, for the weekend? Fair enough. What are you off? Um, just before I get into Sunday's game, I met Matt Kvesic of now Worcester Warriors. Great bloke. Just happy to be there. And I met Alec Hepburn of XR Chiefs. Um, he's he's fantastic. He The boy standing next to me told Alec Hepburn that I drove down. At, like I got up at four o'clock on Saturday morning to make a three o'clock kickoff down in XR. Eight hour drive. It is a long day, but it was totally worth it. And Alec Hepburn called me a, a diehard fan for it. So there we go. I'll take that as a win. Lovely stuff. When he yeah. catch me doing that. No, nah, you'll come with me next time. <laughs> I'm not sitting in a car for eight hours. <laughs> um... with, you, with you, I'm not sitting in a car for eight hours. <laughs> Red. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Wasps versus Saints. Harv, I know you were watching this because you were messaging me. Yes. Very back, Very back and forth. Late losing bonus point for the Saints. So Saints undefeated streak gone. Twenty six twenty full time to the Wasps. How what were your thoughts of the game? I didn't get to much watch. If I'm brutally honest, I had um other things, but I did get to catch the end. Very topsy turvy game. Um, I think there were some players who were absolute class. Some players who were absolute standout. Um, Fraser Dingwall doing his thing again. Um, he's been very very good this season. Um, now I think one thing that was sort of back on my mind it was um, the returning I need his name I lost it huh bigger no from, not damn bigger talking. it was um, oh, I had him in my fantasy team uh, sustained a head injury uh, in the last few seconds of the game um, and it kind of overshadowed um, Wasp's win but altogether I mean still a great win for Wasps at home uh, in front of their home crowd, which admittedly doesn't fill up much of the stadium. Um, so, yeah, I think um, a decent game to end off the week. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I mean, we've said it so many times since we started this new season. This Premiership season, it's so... James it's Gaskell. Hot. James Gaskell, that was the one. Ah. Uh, Not Haskell. Gaskell. Gaskell. Ha! Ah! <laughs> well. But yeah, no, this Premiership season, very topsy turvy. I mean, like last week, we we sat here and said that it's great to see Bears on the rise, and they've fallen straight back down to earth this week to the champions. Uh, Worcester Warriors were doing really well, and then crumbled by the Chiefs. Chiefs are now back in form. Leicester Tigers were running rampant. 
Gloucester are now back to back wins. Saints streaks over. Amazing season so far. We're only four weeks in. Just unreal. But we move now to another tournament. I don't think Harv likes this tournament so much, but it's all good. No, 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 no. I'm not going to say I don't like it because I haven't seen enough of it in its current form. In its old form, I thought it was Tim Pot, but... Oh, it's better now. It's, I think it's going to be better. Well, I, I, Am I allowed to start? Am I allowed to start, Murray? There was one game before... Or no, they kicked off at the same time, thank you. All right, then, Don Marlon. Yeah, go for it. No, no. Do the Ulster no, game! No. <laughs> it was a, oh, it yeah, was a big actually, one. If, if, we, a big if, we're win. Doing, if we're doing the Ulster game, I need to um just move positions. Okay. There oh, we no. Go. There, there we go. There you go. go. Flags. Oh, and a traffic cone. <laughs> Oh my god, the bloody um, traffic con. Yeah, what bloody good win for Ulster though. Well, if we're going off our form of if Ben and Tom were the best team in the world and now they've lost to Ulster, Ulster best team in the world. Yes, if you do our logic of if you'd follow our logic, Ulster's if you use best. the logic, I'm not sure how provable the logic is. Right. But... No, no, here we go. What how did how does it go again? So, so ben and Tom beat, ben beat the Bulls. And Bulls, the Bulls beat South Africa, South Africa South beat the Lions. The Lions. So Benetton was the best team in the world. They've lost to Ulster, so now Ulster's best team in the world. Exactly. There you go. We're going to have to keep tabs on that now going yeah, forward. It's, oh, it's now when Ulster lose next that they become that becomes the best team in the world. Right, okay. That's fine. If Ulster lose, right. which they don't plan on them doing. Right, but the game itself. <laughs> what a first half by um, Ulster. Three converted tries and they only conceded a penalty. Yellow card, I can't remember to what player it was, cost Benetton. Neymar. Uh, Neymar, Neymar, that was the one. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, absolutely cost them. They um, ran in two tries now, and two good tries. The second try in particular, I think scored by Duke. I can't remember who it was now. Duke, yeah. Yeah, Duke, in the second one. Absolutely, just ran. they just got some space. They chucked it around like Ulster do, and they got around. Rob Herring on his 200th appearance for the club scoring well he scored a try was disallowed it was the correct decision but we'll come into that in a wee bit um but then he scored a, they got him another try they drove over Ulster's mall this season has been ridiculous I don't know how much you guys have watched Ulster but their mm. mall is fucking scary almost like extra chief level mauling isn't it just push no, it, push push I, and but I then I and I also got those back so if it stops they're gonna score they're going to score every time of the week. Um, and then second half was a bit boring. Only a try to each team. It was a bit. Uh, Benetton not even converting. and But also did get the bonus point at the very end of the game. But shows how good Ulster's defence was. They conceded a try against a potentially good Benetton team. And Murray, um, you do look a bit of a div this week because you were going, oh, that Benetton 10, so good. He it was appalling. Like missing touch. Missing kicks. He was appalling. Uh, it's good to make me look like a dev, though. Because well, we'll get on to it later. These, this team, if you're watching on YouTube, Glasgow Warriors, we'll get into that. I thought you were pointing at the other one. I was about oh, to say. Oh, he did look like he was pointing oh, at that no. <laughs> Quinn's, Quinn's never... Did, every player I mention in Quinn's don't let me down. So, But anyway, we'll move on. But yes, Unless you've got, you got any thoughts. Any, any last thoughts on the game, Simeon, before we move um, on? I, currently sitting in second, so I'm happy. Yeah, it's good. I like the fact that you've happily moved back to the Welsh flag because we've got Ospreys versus the Sharks. The Sharks get their first win of the URC, 27-13. I just feel like... Ospreys should have won that. That's ten- yeah. Did you see the team before the game? I was yeah, like, I, yeah. I was like, good night. And I was home. I was like, good night, Sharks. You uh-huh. were getting Paul Rice. Um, potentially illegal drop kicking by sharks, but that didn't affect the game at all. Like, no, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't take anything it, away. I, I, yeah, it was one drop goal and it didn't affect the game. They got the they just beat the shit out of the Ospreys. Yep. I don't know how they did it. I just, I also, I feel like Ospreys are going to be like this all season. They might, like, I feel like Ospreys could get big wins maybe against like Glasgow, Len- or maybe not Leinster, but big wins, but then also yep. lose to teams like the sharks. I feel like this is going to be a common theme this season. Yeah, that's I think that's a fair assumption. I wrote down 
the Ospreys didn't actually seem in it, in my opinion. They just seemed very lost for the most part. And if you look lost on a rugby pitch, the opposition will take full advantage. And I think Sharks did that in fair play. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't think there's much more to say really apart from they were just they shouldn't they should have won it but they didn't show up should have would have could have yeah yeah well we move on it's, it's heartbreaking to see at this point we're three rounds in and it doesn't seem to be getting any easier for Zebra. they went up against the mighty Leinster Johnny Sexton getting man of the match Adam Byrne getting a double it's great to see him back thoroughly deserved two years out with injury Heartbreaking, and if you look at the photo, him cuddling his mum, it's it's means more than rugby. Simple, forty three seven to the boys in blue. And they are an unstoppable team, though. That's the thing; they have been for years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. Bit... Did they did didn't, didn't they go last season undefeated or something like that? The the last. Or the one before the, like, the actual Pro 14 season, it wasn't the Rainbow. They didn't, they didn't, yeah, not the Rainbow, Rainbow Cup. Cup. I don't know what the Rainbow Cup was and all about that, but I it was kind of to start, and... it was kind of to start the, the wave for the URC, but oh, the, okay, co- yeah. but COVID happened, so they split it. So yeah, it didn't, it didn't really work. They got Benetton <laughs> up the ranks, and I got him a trophy, I made him the best team, yeah. well, the second best team in the world now. Yeah, how quickly times change. <laughs> oh, I know. But, um, yeah, Leinster, just beating Leinster. I mean, Cronin, Jordan Larmer and Ronan Keller were also on the scoreboard. And just... You know the drill. Let's not make ourselves sad. Yeah. Next game. Yeah, pretty much. Just <laughs> I want Zebra to perform. Get, like, just, just do something, please. <laughs> yeah, there's I, no, I don't, I don't, I don't no feel point like having them there. Yeah, I mean, I said this like the first week of the UFC and I felt like it was a bit harsh to say it one weekend, but if you're already thinking about dropping or replacing teams, Zebra's got to be your see you later. And it's not even again, I'm not even being like, nasty against Zebra. If you can, if they play the way they want to play, I'm still yet to find that out, how they want to play, they probably could do well. But they're, I feel like they're the team that as soon as they concede, the heads drop. There's no... Yeah. There's yeah. no... Ment- and because I mean, it happens so often, they're just like, what's the point? I've got the stats here. I mean, I've been looking at... I've been looking at the games while you've been talking oh, about them. But... I um, the stats. I like this. I like this. Three games. Yep. One point in the league. Yep. was a bonus point, yeah. 36 scored. 36 right. points. 117 yeah. conceded in three games. <laughs> three in three games. In three games, 117 conceded. Jesus wept. Holy shit. They might yeah. need our NHS. Yeah. They need, <laughs> I mean, they, they need a bloody miracle. They Not gonna lie. The, they need to come and sort them out. I don't know what's gonna turn for Zebra. I really have no clue. But something needs to happen quick. Yeah. I think I can't really add to that. It's getting on. It's it's getting sad. It's like the Simpsons meme stop, he's already dead. And that's how it feels with Zebra. That is that is how you sum it up perfectly. Aye. We're we're moving on because that's that's just depressing. We've got a very close encounter from Scotston. Glasgow versus the Emirates Lions. Mm. 13 points to nine for the Warriors. Good win. Nitty gritty win. And it was absolutely chucking it down with rain. So, yeah, again, like we mentioned with Lesser Tigers, if you could get those nitty gritty victories, you will go far in the season. And Glasgow got that. Jamie Batty scoring a try on his 50th appearance for the Glasgow Warriors. And Ross Thompson slotting the rest off the boot. And it seals an arrow win for Glasgow. Rory Darge, another back to back man of the match. Just great performance. Yeah, not much more to add. Nice. Pity on, on the Lions. Very close. Losing bonus point. Yeah, move on. Edinburgh versus the Stormers. This was, this was a great game. I've seen the highlights. Obviously, I wasn't able to go because I was at Sandy Park. 
I am at the damn health next week, so that'll be fun. I'm but... at the zoo. Woo! Yay! Um, I don't know. No, Simeon's not with us next week, but we've got another surprise in store. Shame, surprise, Sash didn't come. Oh, that is a story. Yeah, we'll get into in that. But boy, we'll we'll have to get to that know. later. We'll get we'll get into that at the end. Yeah, Edinburgh versus the Stormers, twenty twenty. All the points in the first half. Darcy Graham, three tries in three games. It's so great to see him back to his best. He's lightning in a bottle on his day. He'll be starting for Scotland. Right yeah, hundred percent. You know how. how I need to correct myself from last week, and I'm happy that I've made this mistake. Ben Velicott, Edinburgh Scrum Half, scored again this week, and he is eligible for Scotland. He's get him in the to, squad. Get him in the squad. I found this out because I read, I read an article. Mike Boyer said there's no reason why uh, Ben Velicott shouldn't be in the Scotland squad for the autumn, and I'm sitting there going, there is. Like, residency might be a big issue there, but no, Ben Velicott played right through the age grade for Scotland. There you go. <laughs> Get him in. There we Sorted. go. Simple. Sort of simple as that. And I said this just I mentioned this to Sean during the week. I will be doing a full uh, Scotland Autumn Test squad this coming week on TikTok. That's my big one this week coming forward. But the scrum halves, three, Ali Price, George Horn, Ben Velcott. Nothing against Jamie Doby. I fully expect him to be in the training squad. But if you've got those three all guns boys in, I mean Jamie Doby's only 18 years old. Like, there's plenty of time for him as well. Like, he is still going to. You know be... what I think, sad? You're talking about like these squads, and I'm just yes. thinking to like Wales, it's going to be so predictable, the squad. Like, you might get a few like Tom Rogers of the Scarlet. Mm. Um, is it Ben Carter? There's... Is it Samuel Ben Carter? The second row. Ben. Dragons. Ben. I think it's Ben, ben. Carter. And if maybe one or two hours, but I just feel like it's going to be so predictable what's coming from Wales. Yeah, where like, where Scotland? I'm quite excited to see Scotland. Like Scotland, so Scotland's so unknown that it could be shit or it could be fucking brilliant. Well, I mean, Josh Bayless hasn't been cut by Scotland yet. I fully expect him to be in this squad. Honga game. Yeah, Hopefully. why not? Murray McCallum starting to show form again. Playing back to back, starting back to back games for Glasgow Warriors, I, f- I can see him being in the squad and mm-hmm. thoroughly deserved. Ben Velcott, like we've just mentioned, Adam Hastings starting to push Finn Russell. James for Lang. Sp- James Lang. I think Horn, yeah. when he's been there, has played well. Say that again, Simon. King Horn's played well. Yeah, Blair King Horn's rejuvenated himself. Mm. Uh, Darcy Graham's found a new lease of life. Uh, Mark Bennett is always out to prove a point when he's in an Edinburgh. I'd like to see Bennett back in there. Sam Johnson, yeah. Sam Johnson, Chris Harris, Sione Tuopolotu of uh, Glasgow, the big Samoan that they've just signed. He's eligible for Scotland. Like It's unreal. Rory Dars, Ross Ross Thompson will be the third shot. will be in there. I, I fully expect Ross Thompson. All this is squad. Like, sorry, I've sent Murray off in his Scotland squad rant again. No, not at all. I'm just, I'm just giving you a little feeder because we mentioned Ben Velcott and I wanted to correct last week because I said he wasn't eligible for Scotland as of yet, but no, he is, and I'm happy I've made that mistake. But yeah, tw- twenty points all. Tim Sweel ke- uh, kept the Stormers in it, and Jakob van der Velt got man of the match. Great game. He could be back in a Scotland squad. It's going to be tight. You're going to have Finn Russell and Adam Hastings guaranteed. Obviously, a training squad is a bit bigger than like an actual squad, but I still yeah. try and do the traditional like 35 man squad because who could you? Really... Who could you? Who would? Who would? Who's going to be the options? It'd be um Ross Thompson or uh, Yako or Yaku. Blair. You, but or you can Blair, put Blair. Blair you, you can put Blair, Blair just. Beto. Yeah, Duncan Weir's back at Glasgow as well. Ah, he's not. He won't get picked. Because uh, but you can still. For the, the discussion. Uh, discussion, he won't get picked. <laughs> so so behind Finn Russell and Adam Hastings, I'd I'd um, pick Ross Thompson. I'd go Jakob. 
Yako. Yako Driver, I wouldn't be against that. I could see all four being like in the training uh, squad, yeah. but yeah. But I could see Ross Thompson playing against Tonga and get him capped while you've like while you've got the chance. I could see a very fresh Scotland squad for the Tonga game. But anyway, moving on. We go across to Galway in the sports ground, Connaught versus Dragons. And Simeon Dragons. Dragons. Dra- have I not said they're gonna do it? And they, you did? Oh, I swear, first time since two thousand and eight, I think they said. Two thousand and five, two thousand and eight. Didn't they Somewhere, won out there? Yeah. 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 Fair. Crazy. And it wasn't just a tight win. They nope. f- bloody won it. Like, yep. I, I can't. I, <laughs> Sean was sorry. Connor have not been playing well at all this season. It's been very up and down. Like they got that big win against the Bulls last week, but we'll get on to them next. Right. But <laughs> I, I, I just think fair play to Dragons. I said it may take them a few weeks getting players back and all of this. Jonah Holmes pr- out to prove a point. He'll yep. be back now. He was actually one of Wales' standout players back in the summer. Um, I think he'll be back in there. And there's the whole argument of because Liam's injured, or shush, and Halfpenny's injured, who plays fullback for Wales? Obviously, you've got McNichol, you've got Holmes, you got Amos. Those are probably the three you'd think of. Um, could, you not move the... Steph, could you move Steph Evans? Nah, Steph Evans is a fullback. Yoan Lloyd's not played enough. Recently. Not played well enough. He He's got he got he got rinsed at, in the prem on Friday. I uh, so I feel, I I would go and I think Holmes is probably more, well. I know Amos is more experienced, but not at fullback for Wales. So I'd go Jonah Holmes for fullback in the autumn. But um, I I just think they're out to prove a point and Dragons. I don't know who they're playing next week, but they're looking strong, and I hope they continue to swarm because it looks so good. Like they're the only Welsh team who won this weekend. Yeah, I mean, we've got that to mention, but yeah, fair play of Dragons. I will praise uh, Connaught's Mac Hansen. Two weeks on the bounce, scoring a great try, and I could say it because we'll be interviewing him by the time it goes out. We've got Mac Hansen coming on the show. I I jumped to the chance when everyone was raving about his amazing try against the Bulls last week. I messaged Mac. He was up for it. So there we go, great lads, and way that was that was that surprised me how quick and how easy that was. But fair play to him, credit where credit's due, top bloke, and yeah, we'll discuss that further in that interview. We move on. I said last week that the Bulls just don't turn up in Ireland, but they definitely turn up in Wales. Twenty nine nineteen win over Cardiff. Now Cardiff were actually doing quite well until last week when Garth Anscombe seemed to rock them. For six, but Aye. again, it came down to the boot. Chris Smith of the Bulls just slot on penalties. There was there was two tries in it for the Bulls, but when it came down to it, it I was think it's Smith, the same Smith, thing as but... Ospreys. That Blues squad should have pulverised them. Have you, yep. like, the back line in particular, yep. the Blues yep. are such a good squad, and the Ospreys, I just don't know how they're not doing it. You look at like Connell. Or the dragon. Mm-hmm. I'll go Connor on Dragons, who they've got good players and then they've got tidy players in there, but they don't have like your Gareth Anscombe, your Reese Priestland, yeah. your Hallam Amos, your Josh Adams, do they? Yeah, they're the smaller teams out of their regions. And that's no disrespect, but like, no, as usual, no disrespect, yeah. But they're doing better than the, the, others, the rest so. of the bigger ones, yeah. I don't know. It's, well, even like teams like Ulster don't have that big. Like, look at Ulster. They don't have that many big, big names like Ian Henderson. I know no. we've got Dwayne, but he's not even come yet. Apart from that, I mean. And John Cooney's out injured. Aye, there's not big, big names. So like, and they do, they do perfectly well. They're second in the league. So Jacob I Stockdale, know. I don't know. So I can have Jacob Stockdale. Still? Yeah, but he's yeah. come off the charts these days. Hasn't yeah. He? Yeah. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully he can get back into a good form. Cause, back oh, because he was electric. That's the thing. Him him and Balakoon with Lowry at fullback. Oh. Jesus West. Oh. Oh. With Henshaw and Aki or McCoskey in the centres. Oh, we want about the Ireland squad now? I just thought about it. May as well. We've mentioned Wales. Yeah. I well, that would be good. And then Carberry and... 
either Cooney or if he's fit, Cooney or Doak. I'm sorry, I'm Doak. sorry. Um, Doak has to be in the Ireland squad. Yeah. Well, and he needs to get a game. He needs to get game time because I'm sorry, him and Cooney are the two best nines in Ireland at the moment on form. Yeah. Hundred. I mean, Sexton got man of the match, so he'll probably knock him down that door for starting ten. Mm. Jeez. But, That's for me to go so much. He but, must be but, like, like but, looking but, I mean, we mentioned that last week. It was just, yeah, we all have. Let's just not talk about Sexton. Who, who Sexton? Get rid of him. Um, it just seems to get worse for Welsh clubs this week. Last game of the round of the URC, Scarlet versus uh, Munster, forty-three thirteen to Munster at Parky Scarlet. Oh, I feel so sorry for. I think it was Rob Evans did a, the post-match interview. Oh, he was crying. He, he was just about crying. That tells you how passionate he is for the Scarlet. I love Rob Evans. Um, Johnny McNichol again, did get a lovely try for the Scarlet. I will give him that. But everything else went to shit, basically, for Scarlet. Liam Coombs got two. And I don't really need to say more than that. Munster flying high, top of the table, and rightfully deserved. Like They have been on fire in the first three rounds. And it's quite cool that you picked Ulster and I picked Munster to win it because neck and neck, so... One, yeah, yeah. So we're doing quite well. We're doing quite well. Sean's pick, not so much, but Sean, I will, I will play, praise Sean for that. He went for his heart. He went for the team he supports, Leinster. No, I mean, Connor. <laughs> 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 I mean, Edinburgh's in, in fifth position. And they've won one, lost one, and drawn one. So that tells you that they're really highly attacking this season as well. So Do you know what's weird? Like, obviously, I live in Edinburgh. I don't want to support Edinburgh. But because of, like, how my schedule works with refing and nursing and stuff, I you only see really more Ulster get... games. Huh? You see more Ulster games, don't I, you? Because Ulster games are nearly always Friday night because of the tradition. Yeah. It's so much easier to watch. And it's yeah. like, I do get really into the Ulster games. Like, even next week, like, I'm busy all Saturday, Sunday, but Ulster's on Friday night, so I'll just sit in my bed and watch Ulster. It's great. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. I mean, you don't... I know that when you're free, you'll come to an Edinburgh game. <laughs> I know. I, I wish I want to go so badly, but I just... Everything keeps coming up. I mean, <laughs> I'm, but I'm, I'm at the damn health next week. I don't like it as the damn health, but if you call it the damn... It sounds all right. It actually sounds decent. I'm going to the dam on Saturday. Come to the dam. Want to go to the dam to watch rugby? Yeah, it sounds all right. Like the rec, like where bass play. Yeah. Not not the recreational ground. That the recreational sounds... sports ground. It sounds. Yeah, that's... Nah. It just it sounds like your local club. That's the thing. It sounds yeah. like your local cricket club. Oh, we do. We had an English person. Oh, um, sounds like your local cricket club. <laughs> oh, bravo! We do cricket with the chaps. You do realize they, you do realize like uh, you do realize it's England and Wales team. Huh? You do realize it's England and Wales team. You're part of us in cricket. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna sit here and cry, talk about bloody cricket on a rugby podcast. Yeah, let's, talk about <laughs> cricket, yeah. let's leave that. Um, yeah, so I'm at the dam. There you go. That's got a nice ring to it. I'm at the dam next week for Edinburgh versus the Bulls. And based on these week's results, that's going to be an interesting game. I really wanted to see Monty Stain. That was like the whole reason I got the tickets. But I think he's busy. I still think he's got his wee time off after the rugby championship. So, oh, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, any thoughts for next week's games regarding Premiership or URC? Because we don't... Me and Simeon, and I don't think Harv does either, we don't really follow the top 14, so that's why the top 14 is not mentioned this week. So, sorry yeah, if you we'll like. Yeah. on to the referee. Oh, actually, I want to do a special, special shout-out quickly if we're, before we move on to refereeing. Sure. Go on, then. Well done, Uruguay. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. I watched the end of that game. I, 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 yeah. I also must give commiserations to one of my other teams, Canada, who sadly yeah. beat by Chile. Can big they... win for Chile. Big win. Yeah, for Chile, yeah. play to them because like a couple of weeks ago, Canada smashed the USA, and I was like, "We're doing it. We're getting yeah. back to the World Cup." I was like, "This is it," and then, and then no. Yeah, sadly, for 
First time ever Canada will not be in a Rugby World Cup. That's Canada's kind of been sad. in quarterfinals as well. Yeah. yeah. It's, going to, it's going to be a big shame because they've, they're not a rugby country, are they, though? But, uh, no, it's only certain bits. But they've put themselves sort of in the rugby world. Yeah, yeah like everyone knows Canada can do. Oh, and sevens, look at them. They're class and sevens. Oh, 100%. They'll win them. But it sounds Nathan, like... Hari- Nathan Hariyama, brilliant player. Yeah. I also think, um, you know, like big ups to Chile. They've they've taken a really sort of big rise in the last few years, and you know, I think seen... it's South American rugby as a whole really is coming. To... I mean, look at Uruguay; they've they beaten the U. Yeah. They've qualified, haven't they? I mean, yeah. Look, 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 I mean, look where the Maori All Blacks went on tour a few years. Brazil. And yeah, remember, they and, Bra- I mean, and Brazil's the strong. Go to Brazil now. Yeah, and Brazil's strong is immaculate. Have you ever seen like short clips of that? They yeah, yeah, yeah. Powered the Maori All Blacks. Like, granted, they still got absolutely thumped in the game, but that like they're scrummaging. Oh, beautiful. It's like Georgian scrum. Just sit back and enjoy it. Simple as I that. I haven't heard about Georgia in a long time now. You say Georgia. They come around every four years. That's the thing. They come around every four years, and then there's debate about whether they should join the Six Nations. Six Nations and then it's the World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they normally get beaten by Italy in a game, and then everyone's like, "Oh no, don't worry." Ah, uh, don't worry, yeah. Um, yeah. But also, now is it now is it now is it Uruguay that get the amazing achievement of being grouped with the All Blacks? Huh? Or is it Chelsea? They do, yeah. They, yeah. I think they're, I think they are in the All Blacks group. Yeah, so that Uruguay, is going to be a well, well, that, well, well oh, done. God, well guys, done that, should for a, fine. that should be a tight game, shouldn't it, guys? Uruguay, Uruguay, anyway. Italy will be a good game. Yeah. That'd be fun. But yeah, ref talk from uh, Mr. TikTok. Not much ref. Been, a, been a clean week, um, really. Um, one of them will talk about the Rob Herring try, which was disallowed. Mm-hmm. Um, came around the mall, peeled off. Um, the It was a bit unlucky, really. The um, other man bound to Rob Herring decided to unbind and then he became a blocker for the tackler. So the yeah. guy it was really clear he couldn't tackle Rob Herring <sighs> a blocker and Rob Herring scored. I was like, nah, no way should a hooker be scoring that easily. Um so um Robert, that was this loud, completely correct decision by the referee. Um what was my other one I was gonna say I was gonna talk about? I've lost my honestly. goal. Huh? What is it gonna be the Oh uh, yeah. So Right, it's a lot of controversy. The law's a bit weird about, it. but as far as I'm aware, being told by the Scottish Rugby Union and Welsh Rugby Union, you uh, cannot score a drop goal uh, straight after a dropout without having one face. So a tackle or a scrum or something's got to be completed first. Um, they've got to, there's got to be one phase before you can take a drop goal to stop it just getting kicked and drop goal, kicked and drop goal, kicked and drop goal. I was just going to ask, so did the Bills get given, like, take a drop, a, a kick, a clearance so, kick? It was in the Ospreys game, yeah. So, yeah. Gareth Anscom dropped, goal line dropped out, balls 10 kick, got it, went straight for drop goal. Genius. And it happened in the top 14 as well, but as far as I'm aware, that is not allowed. Right. It's a bit uh, of a weird one. Um, is that, is these are lovely grey areas that we keep discussing. Uh, it is, it's one of these grey Yeah, Let's not bring up Lou Reed Samet. Um, all the Lions tour. All <laughs> the other stuff I used to love. Um, but, yeah, I'm sure when we get to the Six Nations, there'll be a lot of me just being very Welsh, Scottish and Irish bias. Um, but my game again, I've briefly touched on it. One of my big thing I focused on this week was positioning. It's what I've been told is my weakest element of refing. Um, I re- like obviously, Murray, you saw it last week and it could be a bit erratic. I got it down to a T yesterday. I was in that Good. position I've been told to be in, got around the park a lot more, didn't get in the way, didn't get tackled this week. Way. Had a very I was, I, I, I um, was just going to ask, did you get put on your arse this week? But no, he didn't. No, I did not. But two funny stories from the game because Meta Refing is a good joke as well and it can have a good lot of humour in it. Um, yes. Beautiful try by Harrods. Went straight to the wing, full back cut and cross, and they just went back inside. This, I don't know what he was, a centre full back, had a 40 metre run in. I raced and beat him to the try line, got to the try line, turned around and went, fuck me, ref, you're fast. Which was <laughs> and then um, 
I've never had so the first half was the longest ever half. It was over an hour because of injuries. Someone um we wow. are it was an ACL or a dislocated patella because I didn't really get into it. But the um oh. physio for um Salkirk was a nurse at Edinburgh Napier like me. <laughs> so I had to reach out with them. So all the nurses were out on Saturday. Um but yeah, it was it was uh, interesting watching all these injuries. My nursing head was kicking right in what, looking at all these injuries these days. It's really, like, I found, like, if I see injuries or stuff, I'm really hot on it, make sure the game stopped, everything settled down, because I just, I'm starting to learn about all this shit stuff causes. Yeah. Which is which is fun. Um, but, yeah, not, not much from Ref Talk this week. Quite nice and simple. Um, and question... We've got two questions because they both got the same amount of likes. So, fair uh, fair. Okay. We start with Ethan underscore J Ross. Are Leicester back? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Nice and simple. Yeah. 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 We've well, discussed it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Then, yeah. Easy. Yeah. yeah. We, we 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 did go over it earlier. I think. Um, yeah. yeah. And we've got uh, another question by. Uh, Alan Harves is. Hey. I don't know how I pulled that one off. I mean, I, I, I yes. Could you be our secret? Because if that was, if that came out that you're a host and you can <laughs> ask questions, that's cheating. But it's fine. Uh, can Quinns do it again? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, they can. Yeah. After, I think. Yeah. I think. I think what I kind of was. I think what I kind of wanted to go on was can Quinn do it again and go further. And by what I mean, obviously, is not than Europe. winning it. No, I mean, like, can they do it in like Europe or something like that? Can they go oh, far in Europe? All right, so can Maybe. they do it in Europe? I can see them easily getting to the quarters, like, relatively easy. But after that, like, once you start feeding out, I don't want to say the crap teams in Europe because, like, any European game is big. Yeah. But once you start feeding out the weak, like the weaker teams will say, is when you get the real test. So if you have like a quarter final against Toulouse, yeah, defending exactly. Champions League, that's that's your big test. Like, can you do it? Our, our, um, they're not even group games, but are just two qualifying games, I guess. Are Castre and Cardiff? See, Cas, Cas, from what Sean's been telling us about the top fourteen, Cas might give you a good run. But then, but this is what I'm saying about the Welsh clubs. If Cardiff decided to turn it on, they could match Quinn. Yeah, look at their squad. Hmm. I think I th- it would definitely be a test because I just I, again I don't know their abilities. And I don't, and I don't, obviously you know they're two different leagues, two different styles. I think it's it's a tricky one because, like, and like on paper, yeah, Quinns could quite easily, or should quite easily do. Relatively well. I don't know. What would you class as like a good seat? Like I said this like in last in the last season that we did that Leinster. I said Leinster did nothing last season and I got a bit of eh, how can you say they did nothing? They won the Pro Fourteen and uh, Champions Cup semi finals. Like, yeah, but that is nothing to Leinster. If you yeah, don't, exactly. if they don't succeed in Europe, well, we've, and the we've league, really, it's a really, season. we've really, really lacked in our European hunts. Over the last few years, yeah. Uh, last year, we had I think it was Racing and Munster. Shit, Man, that was shit. tough. We I th- we got battered. I think yeah. in in basically all of our games, and then, I think this is before the whole you know Harlequins resurgence. So yeah, that was still still in like by January time you were getting. It was heartbreaking. It yeah. really was. Um. So that, that happened. Um, then I think we uh, we didn't even qualify for the Challenge Cup. We just put out. And then the season before that, got hammered in the groups. I don't know who was in our group. We finished third above Bath. But we had um, Clermont and some other French team who were sick. Was it La Rochelle? Could have been La Rochelle. I feel like we got quite a lot. So. We've got pla- no, it was Ulster. Oh, we got plastered by Ulster. Oh, John Cooney took every. John Cooney lined every single fifteen man 
and just slapped them. Yeah. Individually. That, oh my God. I, I'm hoping to see Ulster do something good in Europe this year as well. I, I think for us, we just, uh, just a win in Europe would do me. Big like, win in Europe would do Harv. Just, 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 just a win. That's all. It'd be so funny if Cardiff slapped you now. <laughs> but yeah, um, anyway, um, quarterfinals, I think, could be a target for us. As long as we sort of get through these four games relatively unscathed, I think that quarterfinals should be sort of a benchmark. I think you've opened a nice little debate, actually, because like, you mentioned, you know, obviously, the question was for, uh, about Quinn's. Simeon just mentioned Ulster doing well in, or hopefully, hopefully doing well in Europe. What about Exeter Chiefs? I can't say Edinburgh, as much as I'd love to say Edinburgh doing well in the Challenge Cup, but that's a whole different ball game. Exeter Chiefs, I mean, they won it just two years ago, crashed out of the qual- yeah, quarterfinals this year, uh, last season to Leinster. <laughs> They, yeah. they might. I mean, I think it will take... If they can turn their fortunes around this season, yep. and it looks like they are, mm-hmm. obviously it was it was quite a, a thumping. Not a thumping in, like, scoreline, but probably in spirits. The, mm. the loss to Leicester in the first game. I think, um, yeah, as long as, as long as Exeter sort of get back on track, sort of flex their muscles and really go into it, then they could just do it. But... It's. I think it is up for debate. Yeah. Exeter could go in there and absolutely flop or go and win it. There's no... There's no in-between. There's no in-between. It's one or the other. I mean, I will be going to another Exeter Chiefs game this season. Like I guarantee it, but it will not be at Sandy Park, sadly. It, it'll be at Scottsdale. Glasgow Warriors are hosting Exeter Chiefs just before Ooh. Christmas in the Champions Cup. I'm going. I, I want to go. Percent gone. I want to go on one of the European away days. I want to go to um, Castray. Oh, you know how oh. unlucky I am, though, with the European days. Is uh-huh. I was like, so 17th of December, I'm in Scotland. 18th of December, I'm in Northern Ireland, and I was like, oh, how good would it be if Exeter in Glasgow on the Friday night, and then Northampton and Ulster on the Saturday. No, I can go to both games. Be great, and it's the other way around, so I can't go to. Oh no! I don't know what Ed what Edinburgh is like. If they've got a Friday night game, I'd probably go to that, but I don't think they are. I will check with you, and I'll go with you. Well, you would go over your beloved Exeter. No, maybe I don't know. I've got access like ages ago. If Edinburgh were to play Exeter Chiefs, who would you support? I, was, I would just sit there with a big smile on my face and rugby wins at the end of the day. I can't wait for Ulster v Edinburgh at the end of the season. At the dam? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. I'll go with that. I think I'll end up supporting Ulster, though. I feel like I'll end up supporting Ulster. Simp. That's right, yeah, it's simp. <laughs> Shut up, Murray! <laughs> I can out you right now, Murray. You don't need to out me, it's fine. Know. Anyway, I think uh, we've covered... Way. No, I know what your point was. You could out me in if you wanted, but don't because we've got to be professional about certain things and you could ban me up. You could annoy the shit out of me about it when we stop recording, which is fine. <laughs> I'm just looking now. The 21st is the first home European game for Edinburgh. 21st of December? Uh, January. Oh, the Challenge Cup's like a late one this year. No, yeah. Well, no, it's the 10th and the 14th, but they're both away. All right. Who's our first home game then? The 21st. Who? Of January. Who? Oh, uh, Brit. No, Breathe. Breathe. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we can go with that. Um, uh, if I'm not on placement somewhere or effing, I'll go. If I'm, not, if I'm not playing, yeah. Sure, why not? But I think that's everything this week. Two, yeah. two, only the two leagues, little World Cup qualifiers, some questions. There you go, and yeah. a guest, and a guest host. Hello, Our, so, I mean, well, goodbye go. as well. Um, <laughs> we were, we were supposed to do a little thing tonight. Yes. We, um, we'd all ordered surprise stash mystery boxes to open on here, but yeah. they haven't come yet. Um, they haven't come yet. They sh- probably should come tomorrow, I think. 
Um, yeah, so we, tomorrow being Monday, because we record on a Sunday, just, yeah. Yeah, so um, we will open them for camera. Um, and, and yeah. Put it all together and put out its own little thing, pretty much. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. Sorted. Happy days. This has been the Rugby Connection Podcast, episode four, with guest host Harvey Allen. We will see Hello. you next time. Hoyle Fowler! See ya.